So here is my book. This is the Be Your Own Doctor. Um, and it says at the bottom, a personal trainer's frustration with the medical community and her triumphs over adrenal disease and clinical depression. This is my heart. I put it all out there, good, bad, and ugly. And um, it's also the correlation between truly understanding how much the adrenal glands do and regulate in your body. And I included clinical depression on there because I am predisposed to depression with my family history. So um, I suffered, I feel a little greater, um, but not to say that this will happen to you. Um, I feel like what happened to me was a little bit more exaggerated because of my family history. Uh, but I don't want people to think if they read my book and they have Cushing's or they recover from Cushing's that um, the things that happen to me will definitely happen to you. And, and that's really not the case. Everyone's recovery is so much different, okay? All right, let's start right into it. Just a couple clips, just a couple clips from the book. Um, I might jump around a little bit and add in my own little things, but um, I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm gonna start out with the dedication. I dedicate this book to all who suffer from chronic illness and to the families affected by the loss of a person who could once do everything and now may need you more than they ever wanted to. For me, that was my husband, Timothy Treeman. He fell in love with a vivacious blonde personal trainer. Doing triathlons, marathons, extreme hikes were what we called fun on the weekends. But I soon fell, becoming a shell of a person you thought you married. You have fulfilled your promise for in sickness and in health. But I cry because I no longer am capable of being the wife you deserve. I dedicate this book to you. I only hope one day to find a way to show you how much that unconditional love meant to me. And finally, I dedicate this book to all the doctors who didn't listen to me when I said something is wrong. That's right. I dedicate this book to you. Your ignorance and laziness to do your job made me unbreakable for anything else that comes my way. And for that, I thank you. I got this. <laughs> This book is in two parts, my life growing up, struggles, diagnosis, frustration with doctors, and part two is my biggest contribution. I wanted to combine my 17 years as a personal trainer with my own personal struggles to help people with Cushing's keep moving through their recovery and be an educator to those with Cushing's, adrenal insufficiency, or any chronic illness who just can't go to the local gym and ask a personal trainer whose goal is to make you sweat and so sore you can't move the next day. Sorry, guys. I love you. Believe the tough clients to me. I kind of get it now. I wanted to share the fashion and beauty tips I learned along the way in my desperate attempt to keep my business and livelihood going before I lost it all. In a funny way, I have no other skills. I've only been a personal trainer, and I wasn't ready to give it up. Growing up, for as long as I can remember, I've always loved to move. Gymnastics, working out, martial arts, and dance. Dance was my release. I'd close my eyes and get lost in the music. For that moment, I would forget. Forget about my problems, forget about my pain, and forget that I was sick. Unfortunately, as a child, I was sick a lot. Seemingly forever on and off antibiotics for one thing or another, Severe cystic acne, ear infections, strep throat, bronchitis, any ailment that anyone came near me with. I had to be diligent about my health to feel normal and love teaching people what I learned along the way. It's what led me to become a personal trainer. What better way to spend college years learning the science of health and how to make life more enjoyable. I talk in the book about my father leaving four children behind, never looking back, reuniting only to be disappointed. Some really great stories there, I'm sure. Uh, I, I speak about my mother who suffered from deep depression and was institutionalized when I was young. When she was home, keeping her mood elevated, 
was taken on by children much too young to understand depression and the negative way she viewed the world. Our worries and needs took a back seat to her illness. My middle brother, Michael, attempted to hold it all together. He was forced to pay the dues of two adults incapable of following through on the life they built together. Somehow, she pulled it together through the years to find a way to put food on the table as a single mother of four. She was always an entertainer, so she started a DJ company, and my siblings were all DJs. Don't know if some of you knew that about me. However, through some of her darkest years, I watched as she lay in bed, depressed and unable to function. She would pick herself up, drive us to a show, blankly staring at the road as we drove. And for just a few hours, she became someone else. As she performed, she became an actress, pretending her life was something else. She would close her eyes and get lost in the music just the way that I did with music and dance as my escape. I watched in admiration, not really understanding that I was more like her than I would ever realize. She taught us an amazing work ethic. To make sure you show up when someone is depending on you, how to smile through the pain, and that no matter what you are going through, the show must go on. This learned skill to fake it till I made it became crucial in my career and my illness. Given all that she had been dealt, she will always be the strongest woman I know. After college, I decided to start my own personal training business. It was all set, equipment, contracts, marketing. The following Monday, I scheduled a meeting to get insurance. I was a renter at the time. However, that Saturday morning, just Monday was the day I was getting my insurance. Monday, uh, I'm sorry, Saturday morning in January, as I put a load of laundry in, I walked away and heard a loud boom. I turned around and my entire hot water heater had burst into flames. You know the old warning, don't place items within three feet of your hot water heater? Well, trust me, they mean it. I had boxes piled all over. The flames caught on quickly and by the time the firemen got to my home, the smoke was already rising to the ceiling. And out of an odd strike of bad luck that only seems to happen to me, the fire trucks had done a demonstration earlier that morning at a local elementary school and was empty of water. They ended up having to go a few streets over to hook up to the fire hydrant. This delay in putting out the fire lost everything I had ever worked for and I had no insurance. I ran out of the house with no shoes or jacket on in July. Everything was gone. As I sat in the back of the ambulance wrapped in a blanket, a woman for the Red Cross came to bring me vouchers to Walmart. I walked into the Walmart with only my socks and picked out a pair of shoes. As I sat on the floor to put them on, I hung my head and cried. I realized I don't even have a toothbrush for tonight. Why is this happening? Okay to pick up the pieces and start over yet again. On the positive side, I talk about some of my accomplishments. I continued on with personal training and loving extreme adventures. I completed four marathons, three triathlons, including Wildflower, classed as one of the most challenging Olympic triathlons in the country. I was a personal trainer for a contestant on The Biggest Loser. She lost 107 pounds. I was also on Dr. Phil's bridal weight loss challenge, helping brides get ready for their weddings. And our story was selected to be in the Oprah magazine. But still along the way, I felt I struggled more than the average person. I thought it was all part of the game. But little did I know what was going on under the surface. I was eventually diagnosed with Cushing's. Tumors form on my adrenal glands, overproducing cortisol, your stress hormone. My body thought it was in fight or flight, for years in crisis mode. So each organ becomes damaged and starts to shut down. The body goes haywire, producing horrific side effects, such as weight gain around the midsection to protect the organs, muscle loss, hair loss, bone deterioration, diabetes, blood sugar deregulation, inflammation, pain, poor immunity, infertility, nausea, severe digestive issues, the moon face, 
buffalo hump, fatigue, brain fog, confusion, and severe anxiety and depression, along with several chemical imbalances. To me, the loss of one's control over body and mind together is the worst hell anyone could imagine. NIH. The doctors, uh, speaking of which, NIH is also in the book. Thank you uh, to Carla Strada and Diane Hood and Chuck Lightning, actually. The three of you were all um, crucial in getting me into NIH and finding the right people um, that saved my life. So I talk about them a lot in the book. Thought I'd throw that in there. All right, at NIH, the doctors and nurses came in at the end of the four days of testing. NIH uses 12 tests in which you need to fail one main midnight cortisol test and a few other of the 12 tests. When you fail a midnight cortisol test, that means that your body doesn't shut down at the night, in the night when it is supposed to be resting and repairing the organs. It still thinks it had just been in a car accident. It still thinks it's in crisis mode. So having never rested or repaired through the years, the damage had been done internally. And all the random symptoms that I thought were not related all came down to the adrenal glands. It is confirmed, the doctor said, you have Cushing's. By the way, I failed the midnight cortisol test along with all 12 of the other tests. So I am an overachiever. It is confirmed, the doctor said, you have Cushing's. I collapsed over on my pillow in my bed and the nurse bowed her head and softly said, I'm so sorry. I strung back up laughing and said, no, I'm happy. It wasn't all in my head. The doctor said, well then, congratulations, young lady. You have full-blown Cushing's. Some have pseudo, cyclical, or florid. You've managed your symptoms well. You're the healthiest sick person I've seen. I danced, I danced around my hospital room in a circle and said, thank you. That's the best compliment anyone's ever given me as a personal trainer. I then asked what I thought was an innocent question. I don't know if I want surgery. Sounds so scary. Can't I just continue to live with the tumors and attempt to manage all of the horrific symptoms? He said, no, my dear, your levels are extraordinarily high. The damage has been done internally over the years. When I asked bluntly, how long would I have? He said, you would have about five years to live. I stared blankly at him, like my mom used to stare at the road while driving. After a few moments, he said, I know this is hard, but you have your answer. Stop searching. Haven't you suffered enough? And the truth was, I had. The search was over. However, the recovery had only begun. So I scheduled the necessary surgery to have both of my adrenal glands removed and continued to live not knowing what the recovery had in store for me. Your adrenal glands are considered your second brain. Second to your brain, they regulate every hormone, chemical, neurotransmitter, electrolyte in your body to have that removed and just hope for the best was bizarre to me. And I could never get straight answers as to what that recovery would look like. For me, the first year they told me, First year or two, everything would get worse before it gets better. Every symptom, every organ, every chemical and neural pathway that had been formed over the years with this hormone now needed to be adjusted to what they call cortisol withdrawal, often compared to heroin withdrawal. For the next year, I would have flu-like symptoms, headaches, nausea, joint pain, random muscle spasms, constant pain, brain fog, confusion, and even more anxiety and depression. Now everyone's recovery is so very different with Cushing's, but I feel because I was predisposed to anxiety and depression from my mother, it was a little more extreme. This does happen to some people. I am not really, I'm not uh, uh, just meaning that, um, but I don't want people to think that this will happen to everyone. I feel like these particular types of thoughts um, um, happened because I was already predisposed to them because of the depression that my mother and, and a lot of people in my family suffered. Okay. All right. Everyone's different. Every, uh, everyone's recovery is so very different. 
um, for me, it was the negative intrusive thoughts. I'm a happy go lucky person. I love laughing my way through anything. And if you know me, you know, that's the truth. But these, uh, these odd thoughts were firing out of control one after another, after another, it was exhausting. For example, negative intrusive thoughts. They intrude on you. You don't see them coming. You don't know they're coming. You don't think them. It's almost like they happen to you, like a slap in the face that you didn't see coming. You try to shake them off and go on with your day, and then the next one comes and the next one comes. This is an example. Tim and I were walking to Target one day. There was a nice fuzzy blanket that was similar to the one his mom had. I said to him, oh, look, a fuzzy blanket like your mom's. In which he innocently commented, yeah, that's really nice, but I want a different color. He continued to walk down the aisle, and my mind would start. That was a stupid comment to say. Blanket was fuzzy. Your husband thinks you're an idiot. You are an idiot. You've done nothing with your life. He probably wants a divorce. You should just kill yourself. Are you kidding me? All of that from saying a blanket was fuzzy? Ah! I don't even know what to say about that. Just to relive it in my head right now is annoying. One weekend, we were in Rochester, New York. I loved going there. Six hour drive in the car was wonderful. Talking about absolutely nothing, solving the world's problems if we had to, with my husband and two dogs, music blaring in the top down in the summer. Life doesn't get much better than that. This day was particularly hard. I kept thinking those negative intrusive thoughts as we drove. I would picture cars crashing into trucks, flipping over, gruesome, horrific details flashed into my mind as a scene from a movie. Trying to have a playful conversation with my husband became a little more challenging. That night, as I was laying in bed, thinking of how hard life had become, thoughts intruded of ending it. Then Tim joyfully walked into the room holding our beautiful puppy, Molly, who was the joy of our life. She wants a kiss goodnight, he said playfully, as he pretended to dance with her across the floor. I immediately put on a smile and pretended like I was okay. Kissed on her for a minute, and as he walked out of the room, I collapsed back down into the bed and continued my thoughts of ending my life. It was sad. I didn't want to be this way. I wanted to be so much more for him. He's never known what happened that night until now. This was my darkest time. Ironically, the years of watching my mother fight to get through days, never giving up and always putting on a good show became my reality. I didn't have a choice. My career, my livelihood was on the line. I would rest in my car between clients, set in a phone alarm and pray when I woke up. I would have just feel an ounce better. But there were days I remember barely being able to stand long enough to shower. With my eyes closed once again, the water would rush over my face. I would talk to myself. It was all I could do to stay standing. How could I go from marathons and triathlons to barely being able to wash my hair? I would talk to myself, just lift your arms to wash your hair. Come on, you can do it. Just lift your arms to wash your hair. I would cry to my family. It's just too hard to live. It just hurts too much. I want to be strong, but honestly, if this is life, I just don't want to play anymore. It's not worth it to me. I hit a downward spiral into drinking, drugs, food addiction, anything to numb the pain. I would call my friends to cry. You all know who you are. Sometimes I wouldn't even know it was coming. I was making a healthy dinner one night, talking to my friend Lindsay on the phone. She simply asked, what are you up to tonight? I said, oh, you know, trying some new healthy recipe because I got to be good for my health. As I pushed the vegetables around in the pan, suddenly with a little harder push, I said again, I've got to be healthy. You know, a little added irritation in my voice as I, grad as I gradually got louder until I screamed out, because you know, if I'm not healthy, then my whole fucking world turns upside down. I threw the spatula across the room and grabbed the pan, slamming it to the floor. 
and speed just crushed the sob and control of me. I couldn't breathe. All I could do was hold myself in a ball, rocking back and forth on my kitchen floor, surrounded by my fallen food. Neither of us saw this coming. Lindsay let me cry, waited until I caught my breath, not trying to come up with anything clever or helpful. She just listened, and that's exactly what I needed. Eventually, she lightened the mood and we began to laugh. That's the thing. Sometimes all we need to do is vent, scream and cry. Cry hard. It's a great release. Tell your family and friends what you need from them in these moments. Explain to them that you just need to vent, that you're not expecting them to come up with some glorious statement to fix you. They'll relax and be present without the pressure to try to come up with something at the end to try to help you. Let them do it wrong a few times. They love you and they only want to help. Recognize when you need help. Ask for it. Recognize when you need a break from the world and recognize when you just need to feel sorry for yourself and cry. Two months after surgery, it started. The one thing I feared the most, the unknown, the random side effect that had never been seen before. I started experiencing very odd attacks. I thought they were adrenal crises. I thought they were all part. They had never happened before the surgery. My day would start out simple, normal. I would start feeling tired. Then my arms would get very heavy. My eyes would, would lower and glaze over and become glassy. Eventually the muscles in my face would droop and my voice would change to a low pitch. My breathing would slow. Each word was an effort. Soon I would not be able to hold up my head or open my eyes. I could hear everything around me but my central nervous system had shut down. Nine neurologists, eight endocrinologists, teams of specialists, MS diagnosis, ALS diagnosis, seizures, leaving each appointment crying, hearing the same thing. I'm sorry, Miss Lombard. In all of my years of practice, I have not seen an attack like this. I wrote an article for the Cushing's Research Foundation and would see, receive feedback from my article often. One night I received this email and it changed everything. Hello, Cheyenne. I just finished reading your article in the Cushing's Research Found, Cushing Support and Research Foundation's newsletter. I think it may have saved my life tonight. I couldn't ask God for any help anymore because I felt like everything in my body was rapidly deteriorating. I was getting up from furniture like a 90 year old grandma. No physician informed me at all about this recovery. The depression and paralyzing negative intrusive thoughts that you talk about in your article became relentless and unbearable. I was convinced that something else was going on. I was never told that this would have to do with my recovery. I thought that all hope and quality of life was over. I felt like I had a nervous breakdown and tonight was going to be my end. I suppose this is the level that people reach when they take their own lives. How could doctors leave all this information out? It is outrageous that this procedure is treated with such ignorance. Anyway, God bless you with all of my heart because before I read this article, I was convinced my life was over. My deepest apologies for laying all of this on you from a complete stranger. That email motivated me to write this book and include the depression and the chemical imbalances that I experienced uh, more than what I've talked about tonight um, in the book. And I really hope that correlating the, the different disciplinaries of the medical world uh, can help people understand that really the adrenals regulate so many things. And they're so random that people search in all these different directions, not knowing that they're all tied together. But I talk about different doctors, different tests, different things that you can do. If you think you have Cushing's, just Google it. It's a little crazy out there if you Google it. I'm not going to lie. It'll freak you out. But it's better to be informed than not informed at all. Okay. Um, along the way, I realized uh, that the body is one big chemistry set. Every hormone, every 
neurotransmitter, every chemical in your body has to be balanced for it to work. I review uh, several diets and cleanses that I've tried along the way, whether being a personal trainer or things that I tried, uh, you know, with pushings when I was suffering from it at the time, some that worked, some that didn't. Um, I really do believe in a low carb diet, um, regardless your condition, regardless your chronic illness. If you have Cushing's predisposed post-surgery, during, after, everything, sugar plays no important role in anyone's diet. It doesn't matter what you're suffering from. Packaged foods, nothing. There's no good that can come of that. When I got rid of sugar, when I got rid of packaged food, gluten, processed grain, the inflammation came down in my body. The pain went away. My TMJ, my headaches, my severe, severe neck pain simply went away. I don't know why, and I don't know if it will help everyone else. But I know if you reduce the inflammation in your body and you reduce sugar, which is a poison, you will be better off and you will be able to better handle whatever condition you're trying to deal with. It is exhausting to go to doctor's appointments. It is exhausting to be told that it's all in your head. It's exhausting to be told there's nothing wrong. All your blood work looks normal. And I've said this before, your adrenal glands have to be 85% depleted before anything will show up in your blood work. So you will continue to suffer from these symptoms and no doctor will pick up on it. You have to be diligent. You have to be your own doctor, and you have to understand your body well enough to know what's normal and to know what is certainly not the norm. And that diligence can only come if your mind is in the right place. The second part of this book, we're almost done. We're almost done. So the second part of my book is the biggest uh, contribution. And I wanted to take the years that I spent educating people how to work more efficiently in the gym and now my personal experience of dealing with chronic illness and combine that together and help anyone with the very basic moves. I have things starting right from a hospital bed, starting from if you're in a wheelchair, starting from if you can't do anything but barely get out of bed in the morning. I start you there and I give you small little tasks to do every day to build up and build up and build up. I um, bring you all the way from the hospital bed to exercising into your living room, to water exercises, to just moving your body and getting the, that blood flow going, getting that endorphins going, okay? Anyone suffering from chronic illness, chronic pain, I wanna help anyone. If you, if you know someone suffering that way, or you know someone who can't just go to a typical personal trainer or to a typical boot camp or gym, please, please, you know, give them a copy of my book, reach out to me on Facebook, on email. I will talk to them online. I will help anyone. Um, I, I am starting an online personal training um, service so that I can help people um, overseas. As some of you know, a lot of people uh, with Cushing's are in the European countries and I want access to as many people as I can help. Um, again, not only with Cushing's, but any chronic illness. I really have a good grasp on the body. I'm not a doctor. Kind of to myself, I am, but I can really help direct people uh, in the in the right direction. Also, I include fashion and beauty tips I use to try to hide that I was sick in an extremely body image obsessed industry. What to wear, what not to wear, how to dress, makeup I use for contouring the moon face, and outfits I use to hide the buffalo hump and that big midsection that we all get with Cushing's. It's also some of my favorite products I use for dealing with some heat intolerance that we deal with in the summer months and losing our hair and pretending like you're not sick, even, even when you are. I do have a chapter on the top 10 things that I did to feel amazing between finding the right steroid dose, balancing my hormones, stabilizing my mood, the neurotransmitters in my brain. Pain, mood, or the, you know, pain, mood, and energy. I think those are the three things that people should focus on the most. Where is my pain today? Where is my mood? And where is my overall level of energy to deal with the day that I have to deal with? Okay. And working with your adrenal health can help in all of those three things. 
Uh, sleep, obviously, ways to get better sleep and learning my new normal. I can no longer do what I did before. I can no longer perform the way that I did. And that was a huge hit to uh, my self-esteem, my ego as a personal trainer. Um, so finally, with my health in order, I feel amazing. And it's time to get shy back. That's what this party was about. This meant getting back all the things that this disease had taken from me, getting back everything that made me me. My love for nature, exploring things, helping others, traveling, physical effort that I so enjoyed, even if it was at my new norm, and actually being in the moment and enjoying it with my loved ones without those negative intrusive thoughts. Music that motivated me now instead of closing my eyes as my mother and I once did to escape the world. This time, my eyes were wide open. This was the moment when I knew I had made it through to the other side. In closing, I'll say this. I hate that my childhood was so stressful, but I love that I learned the work ethic that I have from my mother. I hate that my career made me focus on my body, but my life was actually saved because my career made me focus so much on my body. I hate that doctors misdiagnosed me, lost tests, dropped the ball so many times, but I love that they made me be my own doctor. I hate that my worst fear, the unknown, the one side effect that no doctor had ever seen, that worst fear came true. But you know what? I love that I have no fears left. This was my journey. Thank you guys so much for joining. Visit my website, lombardfitness.com for books, donations, and anything else that we're going to have clips of 